Hello and welcome back to the port, I'm the Gap Major and this is a review of the Tier 5 Russian Tech Tree Alternative Cruise under the Gorky which is in early access and fully researchable in November 2021. Now she is a member of the Kirov class cruisers, in fact she's the third representative in the game, uh, the other two being the Kirov at Tier 4 Tech Tree and the Molotov at Tier 5 Premium. Now in that regards that does mean she is a bit of a, a tier 4 cruiser that has been up tiered and uh, so it may not be completely advantageous if we're up tiered in games talking of up tiered games what we're we looking at well we are looking at a tier 5 and 6 game of uh, capture the base on two rows we have a Nishashio, a Gorky, a Bedoini, a Leander, a Dallas, a Maiku, a Bayern Poltava and a Scharholst and we're already coming under fire so, survivability wise, uh, you're looking at having the fifth lowest HP base of 28,400. And I should always uh, caveat this is in comparison to the Tech Tree fully upgraded tier 5 cruisers. You also have no torpedo reduction, which is uh, most intriguing. And uh, when it comes to the armor scheme, well, like I kind of alluded to, it almost feels a bit like a tier 4 armor scheme at tier 5. But uh, we'll take a better look at that back in the port. So, back in the port, taking a look at the arm scheme of the Gorky. Uh, let's start off the uh, the bow and the stern. This is covered in 13mm plating, which is not going to be stopping anything. There is some portions of it which are uh, thicker, but they're below the waterline, so they don't necessarily really matter too much. So, taking those away, moving on to the superstructure, and again, we're just continuing that story of uh, very thin plating, 10mm most of it. So, again, not going to be resisting much at all is supposed to put it so again it looks like the bow stern and the superstructure are all uh, areas where high explosives and uh, low caliber ap are going to be doing very well uh, where high caliber ap will probably be over penetrating moving on to the upper armored belt um <sighs> Your deck is uh, 16 millimeters thick, and your upper armored belt is 18 millimeters thick, which basically means they're capable of ricocheting, say, eight-inch gun shells, and uh, the armor belt can stop um, four-inch HE. Um, so that's reasonable, I guess you're saying, but you're not really going to be up to much when it comes to an incoming AP from battleships. And your bulkheads, um, they're uh, 13 millimeters plating as well. So if you're getting punched through the barrel or the stern um, by pretty much anything, um, it's going to continue traveling into this upper armored area, I guess you could say. Turrets, armbar, bets, well, they're reasonably plated, I guess you could say. Um, pretty much can bounce all AP if angled, and the bar bets do go all the way down to the Sistel, which is uh, quite nice. Moving on to the Sistel, it is, as you come to expect, long, uh, above the waterline. It'll be heavily plated. Um, we are looking at 70 millimeters uh, on the sides and 50 millimeters on the top. This generally means that it can ricochet all AP if angled, but if caught broadside on, it's going to really hurt, and your Citadel is going to be very easy to find when broadside on, so bear that in mind if you ever get caught out in this cruiser. Overall, the armor scheme seems generally alright, I guess you could say. It's nothing special, and you have to kind of bear in mind that the Kirov at Tier 4 has the same armor scheme, uh, so really, you kind of got a Tier 4 armor scheme at Tier 5. is potentially one way of looking at it, which is maybe a little bit unfortunate. Anyway, let's get back to the game and see how we're doing. Well, welcome back. So, moving on to the artillery. What are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at having nine seven-inch guns mounted in three treble gun turrets. We have A turret with B turret super firing up front, and then we have uh, Y turrets at the rear. Now, uh, these do have the third longest reload of 12.5 seconds. You also have the third fastest turret traverse, though, of uh, 22.5 seconds per 180 degrees of turret rotation. Now, you have an average HE shell damage of uh, 2,500 per shell, and you have an average fire chance of 13%. You also have the fifth highest AP shell damage of 4,400. Now, when it comes to your DPMs, you have the second lowest HE DPM, the fifth lowest AP DPM, and the joint second lowest fires per minute. Let's launch an aircraft and see what we can see. Oh, there's a 
Oh, there's a Sean horse coming right up behind me, and I've got absolutely no support as our team makes a miraculous charge down the centre. Now, when it comes to the torpedoes, she has two treble launchers mounted one per side, and that is your torpedo arcs if you're uh, interested. Now, these do have the fastest launcher reload of 70 seconds, lowest damage though of uh, 13,500. It's just me over here, so I think I'm going to have to just run for it, because <laughs> I'm up against a shine horse, there's not much I can do about that. These torpedoes, uh, if you're thinking maybe I could use these torpedoes against that shine horse, uh, they have the shortest range of 3.9 kilometers, uh, so uh, even worse than the Bedoini. Now they do have an average detection of 1.3 kilometers, and they have the third fastest speed of 63 knots. Um, however, I guess if you get within 3.9 kilometers or something, uh, they're expecting torpedoes, so it probably doesn't really matter too much about the uh, detectability of the torpedoes. Maneuverability, she is the fastest at the tier, capable of doing 36 knots. She also has the largest turn circle of 860 meters and an average rudder shift of 7.8 seconds. Concealment wise, you're looking at having the joint largest concealment of 13 kilometers. Uh, firing in smoke, its detectability is 7 kilometers, and detectability from the air is 7.6 kilometers. When it comes to the consumables, uh, you can have your catapult fighters, uh, which have a duration of 100 seconds and a reload of 80 seconds. And uh, generally, Russian aircraft don't do a lot of DPS, so they're not exactly that useful. For your other consumable, you can pick between having defensive AA fire or sonar, both of which you'll get two charges of. For the sonar, this has a 80, no, 92 second duration, I should say, 180 second reload. We'll be able to detect ships at 4 kilometers and detect torpedoes at 2.8 kilometers. When it comes to the defensive AA fire consumable, obviously what that does is improves your AA damage by 200% and for a duration of 40 seconds. As always, down in the description will be the command build and the modules. Regarding the modules, I've taken aiming systems, module 1 obviously, and steering gears, module 2. Um, I, I'm trying to do something about that rudder if I can. But obviously, I'm trying to play at range, especially against anything with a decent caliber gun. In this case, the Sean Horse. And there is an enemy cruiser spotted behind the Sean Horse, which is not the Leander or the Dallas. Ooh. And the Bedoini. So the Bedoini, or the Dice, I should say. And that Bedoini is in quite an awkward position because, in order for me to angle and engage the Bedoini quite nicely, I'm going to have to be broadside on to the uh, Shan Horse. So, hence, I'm going to swap my turrets to my port side. And that way, I can stay angled against the Shan Horse and against the Bedoini while I engage her. So, at the moment, there will be a uh, a short period of this game where I'll be engaging the Bedoini with my rear turret only. And, oh, with the Dallas being incredibly weak, um, it is obviously advantageous for me to try and remove that DPM from the table. Because even though she's down to a sliver of health, uh, she can still bring those guns to bear. So that's good to get rid of her. Switching back to the Bedoini and uh, staying angled enough here. Looks like the Bedoini is doing all right. Oh, I didn't lock on. So my shell dispersion here is going to be a bit squiffy, potentially. Getting a few hits, but honestly not as many as uh, as I would like. The shell horse gone, and the Bedoini with her engines broke. It is now time to take the, ad right, the advantage against the enemy. So we're now going to turn against the Bedoini. And it's I've just noted her turrets, and there she goes. So what I wanted to do was just note her turrets to make sure that she wasn't going to suddenly engage me as I was offering her my flat broadside as I made the turn in. Right, well we've been able to grasp a handle on this flank and my RDF is telling me that the nearest enemy ship is over on the uh, left flank I guess you could say. So what we're going to do is we're going to point our ship in that direction, probably lock our guns off to the starboard side and we're going to use our speed and try and close in and engage the enemy. However, um, you never know, we might actually cap out 
Wow, it depends if our battleship's down inside of the cap. It looks like they're not going for it. So we're going to line up and we're going to start on our pursuit of the enemy battleship. And then we're going to collect some data. Let's see. So we're going to be closing in the Bayern. Okay. Leander and the Ashashio are down to the south of the map. So the Bayern is a 15 inch gun German battleship. Um, not uh, going to be enjoying any engagement against her, but we're going to be trying our best. So general opinion of the Gorky, um, it is just a Kirov class cruiser in some regards. Um, so she kind of does feel a bit hard done by when she does get up tiered, I guess you could say. The AP is certainly a surprise. Um, I have found it to be sometimes a bit more reliable than the HE. Like the HE is usually the good old reliable in most cruisers. Um but the AP it sometimes just seems to just work is the best way to put it. Um it just works. So uh, sometimes I find it's uh, it can be a little bit intriguing uh, just 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 to sit in AP very much the same way that I do in the uh, in the Hipper at tier 7. Mm, I'm going to actually switch my guns to my port side. The reason being is I think once she comes around the corner of the island here, I'm going to want to almost sail back towards the base and uh, engage her. Here we are at the end screen, only 38,000 damage that game with 3,074 hits on target. Nothing spectacular in any way, but it, it was kind of a bit of a rough start, I guess you could say. We we were on a flank which suddenly got abandoned by our teams, we kind of had to run, then we got support and managed to mop up what the enemy was pushing with, and then there wasn't really much else to do for the rest of the game, unfortunately. Um, but sometimes it's just how games go. Um, so, let's see, fourth. So even though I would say that was probably a pretty miserable performance in general, um, fourth on the team anyway um, is quite amusing. Um, so maybe even though it was bad, uh, generally we did the right thing maybe I guess you could say. Economy wise to see walking away with a total profit of 99,000 credits with a premium account again that kind of shows how much of a dull game that was uh, considering the amount of profit made there and that's after a ship service cost of 34,000 credits. All in all a um, rather dull game unfortunately but then again like I always say I do these lives means you get a cross section of gameplays uh, from myself and I guess from the community I guess you could say like when you get games like this there's not really much you can do and uh, it happens to everyone I guess you could say well if you did enjoy it feel free to give it a thumbs up and enjoy this kind of game well <laughs> not this but maybe something else but if you, do, <laughs> if you enjoy something else <laughs> feel free to subscribe um, if you're already subscribed let's say thank you very much down in the description command the build modules link to patreon if you want to support the channel on patreon and also the email address to the channel if you want to send any of your game captures until next time i'm the gaff major and back to the port hey hey sail the wave here comes the galaxy Out of the way there, you fellows. Unless you want me to run you down, I guess this is the life. Now, hey, hey, clear the way. Here comes the galloping major.